Uh, good morning, I'm Bucks County District Attorney Matt Weintraub. Today I want to speak about a uh, car stop and an arrest that occurred a few days ago and then yielded a further investigation in which we really made a, a very large drug bust thanks to just some great instinctual police work, some hard work and some collaboration among law enforcement. So I'll jump right into it. On January the 29th, which was a few days ago, there was a car stop made by Officer Jim Zucal, who's with me of Bedminster Township Police Department. This was at about 11.30 in, in the evening. And uh, he was on routine patrol, and he saw a car in front of him weaving back and forth on the roadway, not staying in the lane of travel. So his instincts kicked in, he made a car stop, and inside that car was the driver, Christian Ochoa, and a passenger, Edith Rodriguez Cardenas. He uh, then got permission to search the vehicle. And as a result of that vehicle search, a very large quantity of drugs, cash, and some cell phones, six cell phones, were recovered. Just some more details. Ochoa was found to have traveled to Pennsylvania from California in a tractor trailer, which our further investigation revealed to us was located and then searched, but it was located at Trexler Truck Stop in Lehigh County, just to the north of us. Because of that information, we developed further uh, information to search that truck, and that occurred yesterday, February the 3rd, and that was in Upper McCungee in Lehigh County. This was a black Peterbilt trailer, tractor trailer with the logo of Ochoa Transport Services emblazoned right on it. The defendant, for all intents and purposes, owns that truck. And so we could be sure that we were developing proper probable cause. We called upon a canine officer. And uh, so the handler and the canine both came up from Bucks County. Officer Hockmuth and Canine Barron were called up. And was that from uh, Richland or Penridge? Central Bucks Regional. Central Bucks Regional. And I'm also very proud to say that we support our canine program all throughout the county. And in fact, uh, we're able to donate some funds so that that canine could have a, a hot and pop installed in his car so he would be able to assist his handler uh, and also never uh, suffer uh, overheated exposure in that car. I was just in Lower Southampton yesterday uh, celebrating another canine for which we, we contributed. So these canines, as you know, they're treated just like police officers. Uh, with all the respect, and they do all the same hard work that our two-legged police officers do. As a result of canine Baron hitting, indicating on that truck, a search warrant was obtained and executed up in Upper McCungee, and the trailer was found to have a legitimate load of agricultural products. As is often the case, contraband is transported under the guise of legitimacy. But in that cab, we found an, another cache of drugs, cash, and a gun. And in total, and this is I'm sure what you, you're all interested in hearing, we found 10 kilos of heroin slash fentanyl, the street value of $3 million, nine kilos of either cocaine or fentanyl, and that's to be determined and I'll indicate why we don't know yet the exact contents of, of those packages, with either a street value of 900,000 or if it's fentanyl, three times that amount. That's to be determined based on the lab report that we get back. 962 pills, which appear at least to the trained eye to be Percocet 30s, Perc 30s, with a street value of $30 a pill of about $29,000. 60 Xanax pills, and approximately $45,000 in cash was seized, six cell phones, and a handgun. And one other interesting uh, item or set of items that were seized were four St. Jesus Malverde candles, which our research indicates, and speaking with experts, is the narco saint, or the patron saint of drug traffickers. So I think when you add all this up, this is a, a huge drug bust. The total street value of the drug seized in both seizures is approximately $4 million or more, depending on 
the lab results of that cocaine, potentially fentanyl. And the reason that I'm not sure how much uh, it would be at this moment is because we have to send this to the lab. Some of the materials were tested either uh, in a, a field test or a, a little more sophisticated test, but because, as you all know, fentanyl is highly deadly, even to contact sometimes, we just can't t test it out on the street or out in the field. And to, for safety protocols, we must submit that to the lab. And if that yields uh, fentanyl, in fact, as opposed to cocaine, the, the, the value is through the roof, sadly. As you all know, we're in the midst of a twin pandemic. We were already in a pandemic before we ever heard the words COVID-19. And that is the drug scourge that we've been battling for years. And as a result, unfortunately, of the COVID pandemic, drug overdoses are up. There are many, many reasons for that. But what I will say and what I will condemn are the drug traffickers that are taking advantage of this second deadly pandemic to further their cause in per perpetuating the first one. And that is the transport and sale of illegal drugs that result in the deaths of so many of our loved ones. And I'm really, really pleased and proud to say thank you to our police officers and all law enforcement that collaborated on this drug bust. Because of it, so many of our loved ones will not suffer a death at the hands of these narco traffickers. So yes, this was a combination of great police work and good fortune. And I always tell people it's better to be lucky than good, but frankly, it's better to be both. And in this instance, you had Officer Zucal, who was paying attention. He made a great car stop, resulted in a fantastic search and seizure of the poison that's killing people, but that in this instance will never be able to harm another person again. There were many, many agencies involved, and I remember months ago, probably years ago, frankly, we talked about HIDA and our involvement in HIDA, and certainly our goal is to work up the chain and try to trace these drugs back to their source. And because of our involvement in HIDA, our membership in HIDA, we are able to do that through our contacts and our embedded contact from Homeland Security. But I've mentioned a few of the uh, agencies that have cooperated and assisted us because this is a collective effort. But you have Bedminster Township Police Department. You see Chief Fallon is here with us today. Marty McDonough, who is the, uh, he is our chief of uh, detectives in the county. Dublin Borough Police Department, Pennsylvania State Police, Doylestown Township Police Department, Upper McCungee Township Police Department, Central Bucks Regional, who is the, uh, the, they're the proud partners of the K-9 that found all of these drugs. Homeland Security through HIDA and the Lehigh County District Attorney's Office. So this is a good day for law enforcement. We were able to make an incredible seizure, a great bust. Oh, both of the actors are in prison. They've been arraigned on possession with intent to deliver charges. There may be more charges forthcoming because the latest fine was last night. Uh, but uh, they both are locked up on $1 million bail and can post 10% to get out, but they would be subject to a source hearing, meaning they cannot post bail with money that is tainted as a result of narco trafficking. With that, I'll take any questions if you have any. Matt, you mentioned that uh, part of the investigation is going to be using the federal resources to trace the origin. Obviously, they had that candle that seems to have some link to the cartels. Is there any indication at this point that this is part of a larger network that has made its way into Bucks County? My information is that they were just passing through. I actually hope that's the case. It's unfortunate for another jurisdiction, but it would be better for us. Uh, we were the, we saved somebody else a lot of heartache and pain, Vinny. But yes, I do believe they were part of a much larger narco trafficking organization. And that's where we're going to utilize all of our partnerships, especially our HIDA partnership, to serve as that force multiplier because they can do so many things on a federal level and an international level that we couldn't possibly do. Can you explain yes. why the charges are in Bucks County for the truck that was in Upper McKenzie? Is there an agreement with 
Well, that's a great question. So right now, the current charges and where we found, uh, I would say, at least half, if not the bulk of the uh, illegal contraband was found in the car, which was stopped in Bedminster Township just a couple minutes up the road. What we traditionally do, because we all cooperate together and we still have to sort out the details, but I expect that we will probably take over the Lehigh County prosecution since it stemmed from our prosecution and investigation, and they've been cooperating with us. Anybody else? Did you think the drugs were being concealed in anything, that they were being hauled? Were they concealed? Yeah. Uh, well, in two backpacks, so not, not great. There were no, no traps or anything. I find that oftentimes it's, every time it happens, you're surprised, but people will agree to searches, the, the, either out of naivete, stupidity, or sometimes they're playing a game of chicken with the police. And they think if they agree to a search, maybe the police won't call their bluff and won't search. But yes, these were these drugs and contraband was located in two backpacks that were in the car for which we had written consent to search. Any idea where they were headed? So this was not their intended Anymore I'm sorry? Any idea where they were where they were headed, where their final destination Uh bear with me. New York. We believe New York, but don't hold me to that. But they certainly were passing through. They didn't, get, they didn't get to their destination, fortunately, for many people. Is drug trafficking up as a whole then, if people are taking advantage of people during the pandemic? Is it, does it spread further than just this area or the U.S.? The, the, the issue is that drug trafficking never stopped. Uh, and, and with people either suffering from lack of access to their resources, uh, boredom, loneliness, depression, craving, fighting this, this deadly disease that they're fighting, that their lives have been disrupted, but the drug trafficking has not been disrupted, not one bit. Uh, and so they are preying on a, a group of people that are even more vulnerable now than ever because they just don't know that they have the same access to the resources, whether that's your 12-step program or your clinic visit, your, your guidance, your support group. So it's, it's a deadly time we're faced with right now. All right, yes? Any idea why they were in Bucks County when the truck was in Lehigh County? Uh, any ties or any idea what their uh, was that night? I really don't know, and I bet they wish they weren't. <laughs> but I really don't know. One last question, Matt. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure this is part of, this is an evolving investigation. You can't reveal a whole lot. How did you go from that great observant car stop to finding the truck? Was this something that these people confessed to having, or how did you connect with it? Uh, as you know, the ethical rules forbid me from saying whether somebody made a statement against his or her interests. Uh, but suffice it to say that we, we developed information that led us very specifically to where that truck was located. It was not guesswork. It's the best I can tell you. All right, thank you all. Everybody be safe out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Manny will make sure that he goes through the slides and he'll provide them for you as well. Everybody have a great day. Thank you.